What's better than a free and open source operating system that puts you in full control of your computer, giving you the latest and greatest of what's available in the world? Why the actual apps that you use? In this final video, we're going to cover the useful apps that are installed in Linux Mint by default and how they're going to better your life in every single way possible. Well, close enough. <laughs> All this on Free Your Mind. Free your mind. Okay, so we're picking up from uh, part six in this video. You're basically good to go at this point. You've gotten through all of the essentials of Linux Mint. This video is now a little bonus video that's just going to show you the useful programs that they offer by default that you can use to really enhance your computing experience, to really get the most out of your workstation, your laptop, your desktop. Let's look into a couple of common programs here at first. By default, you're going to see the three programs here. We used files before in the previous videos and that's just your file browser and that's obviously a superb way to manage your files and folders. The terminal up here, this is something you're gonna wanna get into. I'm gonna produce later videos on on how to use the terminal if this is something you become interested in. There are times when this is necessary if you do need to do something a little more technical in the Linux world. If for some reason something does go wrong or there is a glitch, instead of reinstalling your whole system, you can troubleshoot it or you can run some commands here. And this is kind of like your MS-DOS prompt or when you see a command prompt window uh, in the Windows operating system. This is essentially the equivalent of that. And so that allows you to run text-based commands things like that. If you haven't used it yet, this is the Firefox web browser. This is made by Mozilla. This comes installed by default on many different Linux distributions, and that's because this web browser is purely free and open source. You can take the code from this and use it to make different versions of web browser or improve this uh, in any way and send it over to the Mozilla developers. So this is the most popular free browser that the open source world has to offer. Many users will choose other ones, but this is just what's installed by default. This is what you're going to want to use to browse the web at first. There are plenty of other web browsing options which you can download from the software manager. So if you open up the, uh, the application menu and you type SOFT uh, and you click on the software manager right here, and if you go over to uh, internet and you go to web and this is you're going to see a bunch of different ones here the chromium web browser which is what google chrome is based off of yeah and plenty of others so i'll let you sift through that at your convenience and your leisure for for your fun epiphany is also the gnome web browser but this is, again, this is installed by default, so this is primarily what you'll use for your web browsing stuff, for all of your, your Facebooking and your, uh, your YouTube watching, etc. And then over here, if you want to do some basic text editing, there is a text editor in the accessories over here. And this is going to be like your notepad. This is your very basic note keeping application. I actually do a lot of basic screenwriting or voiceovers with this where I'll, I'll type a voiceover and uh, it's your cool line here. And I'll just keep it stored for uh, easy reference or if I need to take notes of something. It becomes very easy to make a note and save it. So if you want to do basic notes, you know, just simple things, use text editor, it's awesome. Linux Mint comes with all the basic goodies you'd expect out of a computer, things like a calculator. You can do your calculations. I do plenty of, uh, use this plenty of times when I'm going over my finances at the end of the month. I'm going over my monthly bills, you know, super handy. As well as other programs like uh, even this here, this USB image writer. So if you ever want to make another, like take a flash drive or a USB drive and put a Linux Mint on it so where you can show it to other people or you can even run and boot Linux Mint from your flash drive, you can use a program like this where you can choose the image file that you've downloaded from the website 
and then once it's available select a USB stick and you can write it straight to there and that changes your flash drive that you normally use to store your personal documents and videos and it turns it into a, a bootable Linux Mint drive that has a copy of Linux straight from it so you, when you power on a computer you could boot from that and uh, almost you know, literally use your desktop right here um, straight from a USB. So that's a handy tool to use. For graphics, you know, again, I'm going to go over a basic uh, analysis. This is a very popular program called GIMP. It's the uh, GNU image manipulation program. And this is kind of the Photoshop of the open source world. Uh, this is one of them, the most pop, one of the most popular ones. And, uh, and this is mainly for people, again, I, I've been in media for a long time. So, you know, for us graphic designers, for the video editors, for the artists out there, or the photo editors, this is where you go to do your photo editing and just make some, uh, make some really cool stuff. But this is kind of your open source Photoshop, if you will. Yay. <laughs> well, let's see, some other things that might not initially be look useful. Uh, Simple Scan is a great program for scanning documents. Uh, once you get your scanner set up, I would recommend you use HP for Linux Mint uh, or any Linux-based distro because they have really good compatibility with Linux-based operating systems. So any HP printer scanners or scanner or you know all-in-ones, these are great for because you can use these in order to quickly scan documents, very quickly adjust them. This has been very user-friendly. I use this for all of my documents that I scan when I'm running my business or when I'm like doing my taxes or any of that stuff. I can save it straight to PDF or JPEG. Very useful for just scanning and digital organization if you want to uh, alleviate the burden of needing a physical file cabinet in your house. Let's yeah, let's move on to internet. So a couple of things that might not be readily understood are things like hex chat. Um, hex chat, for those of us who grew up in the uh, late 90s, the millennial, the you know beginnings of the millennial generation. So this is actually a, this is what's called an IRC, an internet relay chat client. And this is kind of bringing you back to the old days of chat rooms where uh, this connects to a server and this purpose is to connect with other people uh, in the Linux Mint community or any other any other chat community where you just want to chat with people. And so if you're ever looking for help, if you want to, you know, just talk to people and try and get some quick advice when you don't, without needing to go to a forum or go to uh, social media and try and wait for a response, uh, there's a lot of people there that are still to this day hanging out in chat rooms. There's, you know, in this one here, there's 210 uh, total users on here. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're just here hanging out, just kind of like we are right now. So Hexchat is a good program for that. It's all anonymous. You don't have to create an account. You can just, you know, immediately begin chatting or talking. So yeah, it's a great secure way to, uh, to chat with people. The next one, many people have gotten away from using these when because their phone or because of web-based uh, email clients, but I actually like Thunderbird. Thunderbird is an email client and it allows you to manage multiple email accounts. So similar to Outlook, if you use it like Microsoft Outlook for your business or you use like a Windows Mail or something, this is kind of, again, an open source equivalent of that. This is actually made by Mozilla, the same company that makes Firefox. And this will allow you, once you get your email accounts set up, to uh, have multiple emails over here. You can answer emails, you can write them, you can create signatures. You can also access any RSS feeds if you're into that, I manage your calendar. So this is kind of a good little business application for your daily life or for your business life. I use this for business a lot. Um, again, my workstations are all running Linux Mint, so I have to use um, email clients for business and calendars that synchronize with other people. And that's what Thunderbird is good for. It's a really useful program for, for those kinds of things. Um, and lastly, transmission. I'll dabble into this a little bit because this is kind of access to the dark web. Um, no, it's not. Don't, 
don't read into that. <laughs> it's uh, uh, Transmission is a file sharing program. When you run a torrent, its data will be made available to others by means of upload. Any content you share is your sole responsibility. Uh, as always, we agree. We conform, we agree. <laughs> no, this program is mainly for downloading what are called torrents. And torrents is a method of peer-to-peer -peer sharing. What that means is there are many computers around the world that have files like say even uh, they've downloaded Linux Mint, right? And Linux Mint is and well, let's let's give this a quick example here. So uh, let's say if you wanted to download Linux Mint. And you want to download the latest version that we have right now. And you want to get the Cinnamon Desktop 64-bit edition. And you'll see there's options where you can download them from these locations over here. Or you can use the torrent option. Now what this is going to mean is that it's going to open up in your torrent client here, which is in this case transmission. It's going to save in your downloads folder. Now the difference is this. Transmission is downloading this file but instead of getting it from a single server like you see over here, it's getting it from thousands of different peers or computers. Oh, well, it was until I ran out of space. But what, what happens is, th is that instead of getting it from a single server source, Transmission will download files from different computers around the world from users who are willing to share those files. So if they downloaded Linux Mint using a torrent and they have it in transmission or another torrent program, it's going to make that file readily available for anyone else who wants to download it. So this is a, a way to really download media quickly that you can, uh, you can get things a lot quicker by using hundreds of other users' computers to get the files instead of relying on a single server. So that's kind of what it is. It's a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing application that allows you to download files and media quicker by getting them from other computers or other people. Office, you're going to see uh, the, the normal array of Office applications. Um, Office Writer is going to be like your Microsoft Word and that's what you're going to be using for your more advanced word processing you know, tasks. So, I mean, things like if you're doing homework or if you're doing a uh, college project um, or a work report or writing your life story, you know, th this is what you're going to use for that. This has all of the, uh, the familiar benefits of that, uh, of a word processor. The interface, it looks, it looks a little different. Uh, dated, but it kind of looks like how you'd expect uh, Windows XP or Windows 7 Office versions to look. Now they have made newer versions of LibreOffice Writer that are actually available. In Linux Mint right now, it is still running the older versions, but there are newer versions that actually look a lot more modern and sleek. We gotta keep up with the times, right? And then the same is with uh, LibreOffice Impress, which is your PowerPoint application, which you'll see here. That should look very familiar to those of us who've used PowerPoint in the past to make awesome rocking presentations. Well, now you can do the same thing with open source software. And for those of you who use Excel, you also have LibreOffice Calc, which is the their open source version of Excel, so you can do all of your Excel stuff, which I'm not even going to try to go into because I don't know Excel for the life of me. I don't even know half of what you would use this darn thing for. So I'm not going to try and I'm not going to pretend. There are limits to even my knowledge. <laughs> Sound and video. If you didn't install multimedia codecs to play the common video files, like MP3s, MP4s, anything that you might have saved, like an old home movie or something, You'll want to left click that and you'll want to install uh, those media codecs by clicking, you want to install package mint media codecs and clicking install and then typing your administrative password. 
And that's just going to be useful for a lot of different things. So one of the great things about Mint is that it does allow you to play the commonly used media files, which some Linux versions don't let you because the, the codec or the method that that the file the video file was made in was privatized or it's not open source or it's proprietary so you can't you need a certain license to access it so that's the benefit of that that will allow you to play common household uh, mp3s and mp4s and uh, you know all those other things that you're used to speaking of though when you when you do have those ready and you want to play them. Media player is a common video and audio player. You mainly want to use this for video, and this is for opening any video files. I don't have any on here because this is a demo machine, but this is where you would go in order to, this is your video player, just think of it like that. Again, very simple interface, clean, easy for these to understand, very useful. You know, I mean, especially for me, I'm a huge movie buff, so, you know, just having something out of the box that can immediately look nice, can play all my media, super handy. Speaking of media, when I'm working, Rhythmbox is a great audio player. It can download, import, and store your entire music collection, and you can use this to play all of your uh, mp3s your you know all of your audio files i heard that some people don't even keep localized audio files anymore like a music collection many of them just say they they have it in the cloud or they have a subscription or they're just using online radio exclusively which really blows my mind that people aren't even storing them anymore uh, i can't i can't imagine a world where i didn't have access to my music except by a cloud or by a subscription i'm like man i've, I've got decades of rock and tunes that you know i enjoy listening to on a regular basis and without that that's a that's a real bummer man and rhythmbox is also good for uh, things like downloading podcasts if you want to uh, if you're into the whole streaming world if you want to you know look up news or see what's out there in the world really <laughs> reach out there and touch someone you got to connect out there you know you can uh find podcasts to listen to and then you'll see the episodes and you can download uh, podcast episodes. So very useful audio program. Let's see. And then the, uh, the last part we're going to look at briefly are the administrative tools and the preferences. Those were the common programs that are going to help make your computer awesome and make it easy to use. But there are some system things that you're going to want to see that are probably going to be of a significant benefit. One of them is the driver manager. So you can, if there are any drivers that you need to install, if there's anything on your computer that's proprietary or any hardware that you, you need, um, you can use the driver manager for that. We've tackled this in a couple of previous videos. But just want I want to reiterate it again because of how necessary this is. The one thing that you want that Linux Mint provides better than most Linux operating systems is out of the box functionality and usability. This is really helpful when you're doing things like just plugging in a, a graphic a drawing tablet or a you know or a, a USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter. Mint will detect these pieces of hardware and give you a very user-friendly inter interface in order to install them onto your machine and make them work. So you're going to see the hardware that it's listing, um, and if there is an option to use a, a closed source driver or use a proprietary driver that you might need in order to get that to work properly, it'll show up in this list here and give you the option to select it with a radial menu, this uh, green circle here, you can left click uh, the driver you want to install and then click apply changes. And then you'll need to restart your machine and that's going to uh, get everything working right you know, out of the box if something like your graphics card isn't working right or your Wi-Fi isn't working or maybe for some reason you're not getting sound and that's because your sound card needs to have a driver installed. You're, gonna, you're going to want to remember driver manager for that purpose. Another handy administrative tool is the disk usage analyzer. 
And this is something that just lets you see the where all of your free space, uh, your storage space is, is on your computer, how it's being used. So when all of a sudden you get a notification like, man, you're running out of space and you're thinking, dang, man, where's, where's all that going to? Where, where are my files? Like what's taking up so much space? You can click open this uh, program and you can click your home folder right here. And clicking your home folder is going to show a little graph and this is going to be all of your folders and files stored and, and displayed in graph format. And that's gonna show you exactly which folder is containing what amount of space. So in this case, like I recently opened Thunderbird in this video and when I opened it, it created some configuration files. And so it created a folder and that folder has 14 megabytes of data stored inside of it. So I can also see on the left side here how much space is being used. And among that, all of my folders contained within my home directory. And that's going. this is going to show me below how much uh, space each folder is taking. So in this case, the downloads folder has 967 megabytes of data. It's not going to show every single file. It's just going to show the folder and how much space that's taking. So a handy tool if you need to really assess where all of your free space is and which folders are taking up the most space on your computer. Let's see, the next one is your printers. Uh, your printers, of course, we love our printers because they are what help us to you know, destroy those trees, right? No, I'm not, I don't have an environmental stance. Don't quote me on any of this. So no, this, this is simply to set up your uh, your printers on your machine. Uh, again, this is another easy to use program that allows you to add a printer simply by looking for it. And usually it comes up in the list here if you have one. Again, this is a demonstration machine, so I don't have one set up. But if you do need to quickly set up a printer or even see a list of printers, you can do so in here. One of the great things, many great things about Linux Mint is that it will automatically detect any printers you have plugged in and should install them by default and they will show up in this printers area here. And that'll, that will allow you to set your default printer, make any changes, clean, align, you know, all that printer jazz. The last thing I'm going to show in the administration is the system monitor. And the system monitor is kind of like your task manager over in Windows, where this is going to show all of your running programs, as well as the resources that are, that are being used. And it's useful just in case you're kind of wondering, like if your machine seems like it's running slow for some reason, and you're thinking, man, like what's what's making this run so much? Or what's, uh, what's taking up all the resources here that uh, that's boggling my system down? Well, you can see which programs or which processes are running both in the foreground and in the background. And you can see all of the typical data like how much CPU utilization that that program is using. In this case, Cinnamon is your desktop. And so that's, that's this entire desktop right here. This is called Cinnamon. And so right now it's taking up 66% of my CPU and it's using 240 megabytes of RAM. And then if you go into resources, the resources tab kind of shows you a graph of how your resources are being used over time. And again, for things, this is more for technical purposes. You're not going to need to use this for most circumstances. But if for some reason, like if web pages aren't loading and you're trying to figure out, hey, wow, like why, why isn't a web page loading? Or I'm not seeing any activity from my network here. And right now, I mean, there is no activity on my network, which is telling me that there is no communication going on to the internet. So these are useful for a various set of purposes, but I wanted to show you that they're there and that this is how you can use them and what their purpose is and the benefits that they offer you. So that about wraps it up. Those are the most common and useful programs that are installed by default in Linux Mint that you can use to really get the most out of your computing experience. Again, there are tens of thousands of software applications and programs that you can download right here in the software manager. And the possibilities are endless. The world is <laughs> the world is literally at your fingertips as far as figuring out things that you want 
to uh, to use or how you want to make your computer work or what you want to use it for. So if you have any questions about any programs in the software manager or something you'd like to see a tutorial video on, feel free to send me a comment in the uh, comment section below and I'll try to get to it as quickly as I can. Uh, I, try, I do try to respond to as many as I can and I do appreciate all of your comments and thoughts. But that is about it. So I want to congratulate you. You just completed the seven part series on how to use Linux Mint. Yay! <laughs> congratulate yourself because that's a this is a big achievement this is a a really exciting opportunity to be using free software and to not have to be fixed into one operating system or even be fixed into using something like windows or mac os that you don't like for whatever reason it's again this is up to you and this it's your computer so you should be able to use it the way you want it and linux based operating systems allow you to do just that so thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful or meaningful in any way. And uh, do subscribe so that you can see more future videos for reviews on new versions of Linux that come out, as well as helpful tutorials that I plan on making in the future. There's a lot more uh, on the docket and plan coming up. And I intend to be using this channel as a huge resource for you to be making the most of the free software world and to make your computer work for you that much better. So until then, Take care, stay free, and we'll see you next time. Free your mind.